Hi, this is Derek Masiaga with study.com. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some example life science questions that you might find on the Praxis Early Childhood Education Science Exam. Let's take a look. Question 1. In fourth grade lesson on the characteristics of organisms, the teacher wants to illustrate the concept of adaptation in a hands-on way. Which of the following activities would best help students understand how different beak shapes are adaptations for specific diets in birds? A. Having students use different tools, tweezers, spoons, pliers, to pick up various types of food items, simulating how beak shape affects feeding. B. Showing students pictures of birds and asking them to sort the birds by beak shape. C. Asking students to write a story about a bird seeking food for its chicks. D. Playing recordings of different bird calls and asking students to group the sound of the bird call by beak shape. So when we go back and look at the question here, there's really two things that we're looking for. We need to have a hands-on way at which the teacher can illustrate this. And the thing that we are trying to illustrate is how different beak shapes are adaptations for specific diets. And so when we're looking at the answer choices, we need to find an answer that has both of those things, that meets both of those requirements. And our only option here that does that is option A. It talks about a hands-on way of the students using different tools, <clears throat> and it specifically talks about picking up different uh, various types of food items. If we look at option B, sure, they're using hands-on by their sorting, you know, the pictures by beak shape, but that doesn't mention anything about the food or the diet. Option C is strictly just having them write a story about seeking food, but it doesn't say anything about the beak shape. And then uh, option D, this is really, isn't really hands-on at all. They have to listen to a bird call and then it only mentions the beak shape there. It doesn't mention the diet. So once again, option A is uh, meeting both requirements of the question here. Question two. Fourth grade students are exploring the concept of interdependent relationships in ecosystems. Which of the following best illustrates an example of a mutualistic relationship in an ecosystem? A. A bee collecting nectar from a flower and inadvertently pollinating other flowers. B. A lion hunting and eating a zebra in the savanna. C. A woodpecker creating holes in a dead tree for nesting. D. A rabbit eating grass and leaving the roots intact for regrowth. So our question here is testing our knowledge of a mutualistic relationship. And what that means is that there is mutual benefit for both parties, okay? So that's kind of what the, the term mutual means, right? So we're gonna be looking for an example here where both parties in the, in the example are benefiting. And so if, when we look at that, our best option here is going to be option A. The bee is collecting nectar, which it needs, and it inadvertently pollinates the other flowers, which is what the flowers need. Uh, looking at option B, a lion hunting and eating a zebra, that is only good for the lion. It is not good for the zebra. Same thing with option C, a woodpecker creating holes in a dead tree. It's good for the woodpecker, but the tree is already dead and there's really no benefit for the for the dead tree in this case. The only option that may have been close would have been option D, a rabbit eating grass and leaving the roots intact for regrowth. But we, but we see that option A is a much better option, a much more clear example that both parties are benefiting. Question three, during a lesson on animal habitats, a preschool teacher wants to explain how different animals choose their homes. Which of the following would be the best example of an animal adapting its habitat to the available resources and environment? A, a fish building a nest in a tree. B, a beaver constructing a dam in a river. C, a bird digging a burrow in the desert sand. Or D, a rabbit making a nest on a snowy mountain peak. So we are being uh, kind of tested on our habitat here, the kind of what an animal adapting to its habitat looks like. And just kind of reading through these and saying these uh, options out loud, it's pretty clear that some of these are just to throw us off. Like for example, option A, a fish is not going to build a nest in a tree. They may have tried tricking you here and thinking that 
maybe like a bird building a nest in a tree. That actually would have been a good, um, a good response, but they put fish there on purpose. I think option C is doing the same thing for us. A bird digging a burrow in the desert sand. Um, the animal kind of seems out of place from its habitat. And that's kind of one of the things that we're being tested on here. So between B and D, I think option B is going to be our best option here. A beaver constructing a dam in a river. You know, essentially the beaver has to take all the sticks and stuff like that to actually construct its home. So it is adapting its habitat to the resources that is available to it. Question four. In a second grade science lesson, the students are exploring the concept of how traits are passed from parents to offspring. Which of the following examples would best illustrate the idea of inherited traits for children? A, a goldfish develops longer fins because it swims a lot. B, a puppy learns to sit when its owner gives the command. C, a young plant grows toward the sunlight in the window. Or D, a kitten has the same striped fur pattern as its mother. So the, some of the key questions here, or I'm sorry, some of the key words in the problem is how traits are passed from parents to offspring. And so when we're looking at these options, there's only one option where it mentions a parent, and that is option D. So option D is the correct answer here. A kitten has the same striped fur pattern as its mother. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos, and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you're still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful, and then let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics that you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying!